Mr. Valentine, a Miraculous Ladybug fanfiction special for the month of February 2018. If you haven't already, make sure you've subscribed to this channel and hit the bell to stay up to date on the latest parts of this story. If you told Marinette Dupang Chang that she would walk home holding Adrian Agrest's hand that morning, she would have turned pink and denied the possibility. Ironically, now that she was walking home holding Adrian Agrest's hand, she was a shade of pink, biting back the urge to deny reality. As far as she could tell, this situation wasn't Alia or Chloe's fault for once. It was Adrian's. Thank you, Marinette, Adrian whispered, pulling her close to stop her from crossing the street before the walk signal turned. I appreciate it. It's no problem, she said, looking at everything but him. How was she supposed to react to this situation? Adrian suddenly walked up to her after class and asked if he could walk her home. Needless to say, she was surprised, but this was something else entirely. Why were they holding hands? Did she do something? Was he in trouble? She stayed quiet until they were at her front door. Adrian? Sorry about this, he said, letting go of her hand. But do you mind if we do the same thing tomorrow? I... How should she respond? What was going on? Please, Marinette, I need you. Well, who could say no to a request like that? Okay, she smiled, completely unaware of what she had agreed to. She woke up in a panic at her mother's call. Was she late for school? It was Wednesday, so there shouldn't be anything going on. Yes, mother? She yelled, jumping out of bed and scampering down the stairs to see Adrian Agrest standing in her living room. She immediately dashed behind the sofa, embarrassed by her white spotted pink pajama pants. Hey, Marinette, Adrian said. Good morning. Good morning, she whispered. What are you doing here? I came to pick you up. I appreciate you helping me out like this. Yeah, of course. She was still confused as to what exactly she had signed up for. Go get changed. We're going out for brunch. Marinette didn't say another word as she tried to climb the stairs calmly but quickly. It almost seemed as though he was taking her on a date. But that couldn't be right, could it? He had never shown an interest in her before. She caught Tiki's puzzled expression as she tugged a white t-shirt over her head and shrugged, lost in what was happening. Into the purse, she whispered to her companion. I don't know what's going on either. He helped her into the car, and she buckled herself in, amazed at how comfortable the seats were. <laughs> the cushion swallowed me the first time, too! He laughed, seeing her struggle to sit upright. Where are we going? She asked. Just a little restaurant, he said. I figure they'll get the best pictures there. Pictures? He looked at her and furrowed his eyebrows. Marinette, he began, you do know what's going on, right? Didn't Natalie tell you? No. Oh, uh, well... A blush began to spread across his cheeks. This is a bit awkward, then. <laughs> Sorry, I tend to make that happen. Oh, no, Marinette, that's not what I meant. I. 
He cleared his throat. I need you to pretend to be my girlfriend for a few days. If she were a piece of electronics, she would have indeed short-circuited. I beg your pardon? She said, concentrating on keeping her voice even. Well, calling it a few days is a bit of an understatement. I'm actually trying to avoid a catastrophic Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day? That's two weeks away! Yeah, the press goes crazy this time of year, trying to pin every person in the media into a scandalous relationship. And I'd never be able to eat all of the chocolate I'd get if I'm single. So I thought getting a fake girlfriend would help the tabloids and my co-workers chill out a bit. You want us to date until Valentine's Day? Yeah, but only in public. I talked to Natalie about it and she agreed. The class doesn't know, but we can tell them tomorrow. If you agree to it, that is. Sorry, I thought you were already filled in. Marinette felt her brain short circuit. Just a few individuals knew about this? Or just the two of them and Natalie? Did his father know? Would she have to face Gabriel Agrest while he's under the impression that she was actually dating his son? Okay, slow down. Questions lead to anxiety. Marinette knew if she stopped the question, she'd be able to calm down and think at least a little bit. She should think about this calmly and rationally. This was a big deal that would be splattered across the media and affect the classroom and probably the peace and quiet of her parents' bakery. That, and she didn't want to accept too soon and seem... Yes! She exclaimed, a little too loudly. Marinette felt her already flushed cheeks turn from a I'm sitting next to Adrian aggressed hue to that of embarrassment. Surprise flashed across Adrian's face before he melted her heart with a smile. Great! He said. Oh, what a relief! I owe you one, Marinette! Thank you! In the blink of an eye later, the car pulled up in front of a restaurant. The windows were tall enough to make any sunlight seeker envious of the store's structure, and the glass door gave it a classy feel. Marinette could tell from a glance that the high ceilings and rows of books made the location easy to romanticize. Marinette could tell from a glance that the high ceilings and the gold leaf designs made the location easy to romanticize. This seems like a perfect place for the press to question a potential new lover, don't you think? Adrian asked, fixing his hair in the door's reflection. Do you know if anyone's here yet? Our driver's about to call in a tip. Let's grab a table in the back to make it look like we're trying to squeeze in a date without anyone noticing. I hope you don't mind me wearing sunglasses inside. <sighs> Anything to sell the story, right? Marinette said, giving his comment an awkward chuckle. She was screaming on the inside. He reached for the door handle and put his other hand on her waist, leading her in. Marinette suddenly became acutely aware of her body and how it tingled as his hand rested on her side. She nearly tripped through the doorway, heart racing, and noticed a couple of heads turn at their entrance. The hostess escorted the two of them back to a... The hostess es the hostess es The hostess escorted the two of them to a back table and placed a menu in front of them, leaving them the message that a server would be with them shortly and cucumber water was on the way. The decor was lost on her as Marinette stared sternly at the menu, too flustered and conscious of herself to look elsewhere. She knew Adrian would pay for whatever she ordered, but the prices threw her off her game. The last time she saw prices like the ones on the menu, she was in a Kate Spade boutique in Paris, window shopping through the clearance aisle. This was no place for high schoolers to dine. Any ideas? 
His voice jolted her out of her thoughts. She couldn't tell he was looking at her because of the sunglasses. It's also... She began. Would it be rude to point out the prices? Fancy? <laughs> yeah. Truffles aren't something you'd find at Starbucks. That's for sure. I didn't realize you were popular enough for a stunt like this. One of the models I did a shoot with a few weeks ago was giving me a bit of trouble. That's all? Yeah. I figured I could count on you because you're such a good friend, Marinette. What are classmates for? She pressed her lips into a smile and looked back at the menu. The countless Italian dishes bolded in front of her. Adrian hesitated before taking off his sunglasses. Do you... He began, cutting himself off as he offered them to her. Do you want to wear these instead? It might be best for you to stay anonymous as long as possible, actually. You'd rather have rumors and speculation than a real face? I'd rather have the real thing, but here we are. Marinette felt her chest tighten at his words. She'd been too scared to ask in the previous months, but being his fake girlfriend was enough of a push. Adrian, she began. Is there someone else you like? He sighed and set his menu down. He didn't have to answer. Marinette could tell by the tint of his cheeks that there was someone. Well... Why don't you ask her to do this instead? There's no way! We get along well, but we're not like that. I don't want to ruin it. Oh. Okay. Marinette was grateful the server stopped by just in time with some cucumber water. She knew pushing the subject would be awkward, and she certainly didn't want to hear about how the boy she liked pined after someone else. She brought the news upon herself, but at least now she wouldn't misunderstand his actions towards her over the next two weeks. They were only pretending. Perhaps it would be like they were in kindergarten playing house again. Yeah, right. There was nothing pretend about her feelings for Adrian Agrest. She had a crush on the guy for over a year now, after all. Their meal was accompanied by her heartbeat, a soundtrack to her nervousness and somewhat lonely feeling making itself at home in her chest. She couldn't remember what they talked about, but the time passed all too quickly while dripping away slower than a bathtub filled one drop at a time. To be honest, it was like the air was suffocating her, and the chatter of the restaurant felt like dozens of eyes gossiping about them as if everyone knew and pretended not to show it. She didn't eat much, despite Adrian's protests. She felt sick to her stomach, uncomfortable and ready to retire, but knowing she couldn't tell anyone this is fake. She'd gotten good at keeping secrets like this, but now she had to wear a facade all the time instead of just as a civilian. Shortly after getting home, she collapsed onto her bed, groaning. What do I do, Tiki? Marinette asked, opening her purse to let her companion enjoy the dessert she took home with her. Do you want to talk about it? Kind of. I mean, I love you, Tiki, but sometimes millennium's worth of wisdom can be a bit overwhelming because there's no wiggle room. Who else could you talk to? Besides Natalie? No one. I don't want to ruin this for Adrian, but I'm sure he'll call it off if I show discomfort. What about Cat Noir? He isn't friends with me as Marinette. 
just don't talk with him as Ladybug. He likes spending time with you after all. Huh. Well? You're right, Tiki. Spots on! Marinette felt warmth spread across her as she went from wearing cotton to enhanced spandex. Okay, cat, she said, tapping to call him. Let's see if your extra set of ears is good for listening. She heard the line click before his face showed up on the screen. Yes, bugaboo? He asked, bringing his face unreasonably close to the camera. Want to meet up? She bit back a smile as he almost dropped his device at her words. Yes. <laughs> yes! Cat didn't try to hide his excitement. Where? When? Tonight? Tonight. <laughs> Slow down, cat boy. Ladybug smiled. I'll see you on Notre Dame in half an hour, okay? Yeah, I'll be there. She smiled to herself and hung up. Ladybug wasn't sure what she was going to say yet, but at least he would understand if she were vague. There was no need to mention Adrian by name, nor would he ask because they had a strict rule about not alluding to their identities. She didn't realize then the irony of going to Cat Noir's side, but by the time Valentine's Day came, there would be one boy, and only one boy, with a hold on her heart. Little did she know that boy was most comfortable wearing black leather. But will she realize who her valentine is before the celebrated day comes? Thank you so much for listening. Part 2 will be available tomorrow. In the meantime, you can check out these other videos. I'll catch you next time.